Hi there, I'm showing you in this video a real-time version of the visualization model I'm working on this last month and this is a model that I'm utilizing quite a lot to work with bird songs and I actually began developing it as a solution for bird song visualization and analysis and this is the first 100% real-time version that I created. Um, I'm using the sloppy webcam that I have here and the microphone it has as an audio source and um, in this version the model is not designed to represent anything specific like i don't know specific features in the spectrogram frequencies whatever it's kind of a general purpose one but you can actually do uh, some cool stuff and some quite interesting thing so um, basically what the model does is to interpret and translate the audio as point and to distribute the points into 3d space like to create a spatial images of the sound and these points end up creating this kind of intricate layered networks and um, every point comes with um, with a subset of, of information embedded on it so um, every point has a color and the color indicates the most active frequency band at the moment of emission so it's not a precise frequency measurement it tells you more or less where the most energy is in the signal at every moment so it's a, like a frequency zone or it tells you where the sound is going another uh, value is the amplitude value on top of every point um, there is an emission time expressed in seconds on the bottom uh, there is a relative lifetime, uh, also expressed in seconds, it's an animated value. And um, in this last version there is a new data tool on the left, which is the spectral centroid, expressed in kilohertz. And um, the spectral centroid is like the center of mass of the spectrogram, it's like an average of everything that's going on in the spectrogram uh, at a certain moment of time. So basically every point now has also the mean frequency of everything that is going on in the spectrogram and um, higher values suggest a brighter signal while darker values indicate a lower values indicate a darker one. And um, yeah, so you can tell how my usual voice range, my normal voice range still stays at about 200 Hz. But I can try to change the pitch with my voice so with some uh, falsetto, like uh, And you can tell how this reflects into the model with changes in colors, in shape distribution, the shape of the points also. So basically my voice is constantly shaping and reshaping the model uh, over time in, uh, in space. And uh, another feature that I devised with this version is the possibility to save snapshots of the structure. And this is an extremely interesting thing. So basically at any moment I'm able to freeze the real-time flow and have a, a create a, a still 3D model of it with all the data embedded of it. So I can try to have a snapshot now and see how it looks like. So yeah, basically this is a 3D model of my voice, we can call it that. Uh, you can tell how the different values are for every point, the distribution, the different colors, etc. I can also navigate it a bit with this amazing zoom slider that I built for the occasion. And you can also tell how the uh, normal range of my voice has also higher frequency particles embedded on it, which basically are the S's, the s -s -s sounds that I do while I talk. And it's, it's interesting to see how they are somehow sampled and inserted into the 3D model uh, organically. So uh, I can switch back to the real-time generation at any moment. And basically this is all data, these are uh, numbers uh, datasets which can be saved and elaborated in many different ways. They can be uh, put into libraries, they can be analytically compared, they can be uh, put in relationship one with the other, and they can uh, also be represented in, in different ways into graph and such. So for instance, uh, in this version, I built a couple of secondary graphs which are already into the touch designer network. So I can have another snapshot now and see how they look like. 
So yeah, this is uh, another 3D model of my voice and uh, I built a graph that puts in relationship uh, amplitude and frequency over time. So here we have the amplitude values on the y-axis and the uh, time window in which the snapshot has been taken on the x-axis, which is 10 seconds, but it can be virtually any time. And the colored points are the frequency information for every point. So basically what you see here, you see here, this is the same thing. It's just data that is uh, represented uh, differently. So uh, basically you have a 3D model here with additional X, Y and Z information for every point. And you have the same data here reported into a linear B-dimensional graph. Um, and uh, you see how it looks like. And uh, another graph that I built uh, puts in relationship the spectral centroid values with uh, the amplitude values. And um, it's cool to see how the brightness of the signal can more or less relate with uh, its amplitude. So these are two possibilities of lots of possibilities that can be, can be done with this model, which basically is not just a simple visualizer, it's more like a it can be a, a real-time audio analysis tool that can be used for a number of um, different purposes and uh, the users are um, quite... Um, they, they can be very much. And um, yeah, I'm going to implement many other functions in the, in the future work that I'm doing on this. I have already many ideas of what to do. And uh, yeah, now I can try something crazier with my voice, uh, like I can try to save a snapshot of this crap and see how it looks like. Okay, you can see the normal range of my voice. You can see my falsetto range quite clearly and my whistle too, that is embedded as a structure like per se into the overall model and I can see how it looks like in the graphs. You can tell how my falsetto amplitude goes basically off scale in the graph, but you can also clearly detect all the episodes in, um, that I did in my voice in the time dimension, which is pretty cool. And uh, also I can see how um, the spectral centroid and amplitude relates on this model. So yeah, this is... Uh, uh, where my work is, uh, the direction where my work is going at the moment. And um, another um, very cool thing that I'm trying to do with this model is to feed it any audio source I can find because it can process every audio. So basically whatever can produce a sound can be fed into it. So I can try maybe some toy or uh, an harmonica. the ringtones of my cell phone So this is basically how I'm wasting my time right now. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, like the state of the art of my work and um, and this is what I'm doing. And as a further development on this model, I'm going to introduce MIDI soon. I'm going to implement MIDI on it and I'm very curious to see uh, where it can go because um, another project I'm very much involved now is um, uh, the visual MIDI guitar and um, I'm seriously interested what, on, on, on seeing what can be achieved with these uh, uh, different technologies put together. And um, yeah, I think also that uh, when I'll be done with all the development work, I'll, be, I'll try to talk a bit more in depth about how this uh, models are actually built because the workflow is not really easy. There are many things, many techniques going together at once and the touch designer networks are rather colossal. 
so um, it, it would require quite an effort to actually explain everything and also recording quality now is not really great because I'm going completely in real time and even if I have a rather powerful GPU it's barely holding everything together so I'm doing what I can anyway um, yeah I guess uh, that's it for now and uh, if you want more of that you can uh, like and subscribe as they say uh, since more is to come i'm mostly active on instagram but every now and then i come back to youtube to post some development of my work i'll try to be more regular here and post more stuff and maybe also some some more creative thing and um, we'll see where it goes uh, thanks a lot for watching and uh, see you soon bye